Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the Creality CR Scan Lizard. If you've been following my channel for a while, you may see that I've reviewed quite a lot of 3D printers, some laser engravers and CNC machines, but I don't have any experience with 3D scanners. So, like most people who are deciding on buying their first 3D scanner, I have no idea what this thing is capable of. I will just use it right out of the box and see how easy or complicated it is to make this 3D scanner work. I would like to thank Creality for sending me the scanner to review, and with that, let's get started. We have a turntable, a mini USB cable to power the turntable, a scanner with its own power supply, a data and power splitter cable, a protective case, a user manual, a USB drive, and some power outlet converters. First, I will connect the splitter cable to the scanner. Make sure to align the red dot before pushing it in order to not damage the pins. One end is for the power supply, and the other end is for your computer. Connect the mini USB cable to the turntable. You can just use any phone charger to power it. The manual and software are on the USB drive that comes with the scanner. This is an old version. When I tried installing it, the features are basically the same as the new version, but the user interface of the new version is still better, so I will download it from Creality's website. Go to Support, Download Center, Ecosystem, CR Scan Lizard, and here we have the updated user manual and the CR Studio 2 software. Let's download and install them. Okay, I just read the manual while installing the software. After it's complete, select the scanner model and start scanning. The software will tell you what the requirements for the objects are like how you can't scan transparent or shiny objects, or anything that can't retain its shape or posture while scanning. You may need to spray the surface with some 3D scanning spray, which is quite expensive, but I saw some people using spray paint or primer if they don't plan on reusing the original object, or even using dry shampoo if they want to wash it and restore the original conditions of the object after scanning. There are two modes. The easy scan mode is for you to use the scanner as a handheld scanner. There is also table mode where you put the scanner on a tripod and the object on the turntable. For the small objects I will scan in this video, I will just use table mode as I found it's easier to use and provides more consistent results. Then it tells you how to use the distance gauge on the left side of the screen. For the position adjustment, I found that it's not possible to make sure the object is completely displayed in the preview box unless the object is really small, but I'll talk more about this later when I tried scanning a larger model on the turntable that couldn't fit inside the preview box. There are also two scan modes, the geometry mode and the texture mode. I will test them out and see what the difference is. Finally, it shows you the 3D scanning workflow, starting with the preview mode for you to position the object on the turntable. Then, remove the object and just scan the turntable. Put the object back on the turntable and do the scan, and the software will remove the turntable from the scan. This sounds pretty simple. The shortcut keys look complicated, but it's basically some combination of the Ctrl or Alt key with mouse buttons. So, let's start our first scan. I will start by scanning a 3D Benchy, as everyone knows what a 3D Benchy looks like and what its size is. Let's switch to table mode and start the preview to position the object. I think it looks fine. It shows the Benchy and the turntable. I will slightly align the object to the center of the screen. I didn't use the tripod that comes with the scanner, as it's just a standard 1 4th inch connector so I used my own tripod which is sturdier and makes adjusting the angles easier. Okay, we can now remove the object and just scan the turntable and start it. This took around 10 seconds. Put the Benchy back and we can start the scan. It took around 40 seconds to capture 320 frames and 15 seconds to process. We still need to scan the bottom of the Benchy, reposition the object, then select Append and do one more scan from a different angle. It took another minute to capture and process the second scan. 
Now, we can show both scans and select Align to let the software align them automatically. It seems the software aligned them correctly, and we don't have to do this manually. Click Process, and it will take another 30 seconds to process. OK, it is now done. It seems the scan is not very clean, especially the area inside here. Let's try a simple shape, a wooden phone stand. Enter preview mode and reposition the camera to fit the object inside the preview window. OK, it looks good to me. We can remove the object and select initial to scan the turntable. After 10 seconds, it's done, and we can put the object back and start the first scan. It looks good, but as the first scan is missing the bottom, I will reposition the object and do a second scan. It seems the object is too full to fit, but I will let the scan finish and see if it's usable. The top is missing, but let's use Auto Align and see what the software comes up with. It only took 6 seconds, and the result seems alright. Let's click Process and let it do the rest. It took 1 minute and 50 seconds, and the result is not bad. Finally, I will try this taller Spider-Man model. When I tried doing a preview and lifting the model inside the preview window, there is just no way I can do this. The distance gauge is still showing too far. The best I can do is only scan the lower half of the model in the first scan. Then, I will lay it down to scan the front of the model. Finally, flip it over to scan the back. OK, we have all three scans here. Show them all and select Align and let the software do auto-align. Surprisingly, it's still aligned perfectly. Click Process and let it do the Rebuild, Noise Removal, Fusion, Repair, and Cleanup. This all took less than two minutes, and the model looks pretty amazing. I will export it to an SDL file and reprint the Spider-Man 3D scan model and compare it to the original model. Let's import this model into Kira. As you can see, the bottom of the model is not completely flat, so I will lower it until it has a flat bottom on the build plate. OK. I will use the Ender 5 S1 to print this model at 100 mm per second as I don't want to use the maximum speed of 250 mm per second and have this impact the print quality. The details on the model are not as good as the original one, as we use geometry mode to scan this model, many details on the surface are missing. So, I will use the other mode, the texture mode, to scan this model again and see if it can capture more details on the surface. I will repeat the same process, except this time, I will choose texture mode. Finally, let the software do auto-align and rebuild the model. Okay, here is the texture mode model. I really can't tell the difference when it's on the screen, but I will print this model again to compare all of them side by side. I can definitely see the difference between geometry mode and texture mode. Texture mode did capture more details on the surface. It's much closer to the original model compared to geometry mode. I think the result is still very presentable, considering that I didn't put too much effort into this. All I did was position the model on the turntable. Everything else was done automatically by the software. Okay, let's share what I think of this scanner. 1. The result is not bad. It can scan, align, and process automatically without too much effort. For a few hundred dollar 3D scanner, I think it is pretty usable. Two. The software UI has improved a lot from the previous version, but the controls are still not super user-friendly, especially when the auto-align isn't working well or you need to remove noise from the model manually. The user manual provides some very basic guides, but you may still need to spend a few hours getting familiar with the features. 3. For models like the 3D Benji that have a hollowed part in the middle, the area cannot be accurately scanned. 
I'm not sure if there are some other special tricks to make it work better, but just putting the object on the turntable and starting scanning may not work too well with models like these. The wooden phone holder, which had a more simple geometry, works pretty well even though the scan was incomplete. The Spider-Man model scanned in texture mode worked very well, and the software did everything by itself. Since this is my first and only 3D scanner, I don't have any technical suggestions for Creality, as I really don't know much about this, but from a user's point of view, I would still like to give a few suggestions. 1. The turntable doesn't come with a power supply. Of course, I can't really imagine most people can't find a phone charger and a USB port to power this 5V turntable. But, as the price of this 3D scanner is not cheap and over $700, I think it should come with everything that allow users to use it right out of the box. 2. The software instructions are too simple. As I have experience with Fusion 360 and Photoshop, I can probably guess how it works and try out different combinations to work with the shortcut keys. But since this 3D scanner is made by a 3D printer company, I expect that their target buyers are those who already have a 3D printer. I would say this could be very frustrating if someone only has experience with the Slicer software like Cura. A much better tutorial video series is needed if they want to target everyone with a 3D printer, and they should put the videos inside the software to guide the user through this step by step. In conclusion, this 3D scanner works. The scanning time and process time are fast, but the process time most likely depends on the speed of your computer. I'm using a 3-year-old desktop with an Intel i9-9900KF processor with a 64GB memory, a NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super GPU, and an NVMe SSD. It's a bit outdated, but the speed of the computer is still pretty fast. You may find the software to run a bit slower if you use it with an old laptop. If you are interested in this 3D scanner, I put the link under the description. That's it for this video. If you liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe button, and make sure to press the notification bell to receive new video updates. I will see you next time.